All right. We are here. We are Galaxis. And welcome. We have a question for you today. How do you grow? Do you grow through choice and will and, and freedom? Or do you grow through pressure, demand, crisis, stress? Well, most people choose the crisis method. Most people resist change. Are you one of them? If you are, then change comes as an unwelcome guest, requiring you to move out of your comfort zone, to deal with something, another hassle, another challenge, another stress. Oh me, oh my, universe must have it out for me. Well, you may even know, because you're on the spiritual path, that the universe doesn't have it out for you. The universe is your friend. The universe is supporting you, loving you. But you may still resist change and the growth that change triggers you into. Now, everyone has to grow. It's just part of life. First, you grow physically. You grow emotionally, hopefully. You grow mentally and spiritually. And your spiritual path is, in effect, the process of your growth from who you are at the beginning of your life to reunion with God. God is all that is, so that you become divine consciously. You already are divine. You already are God. God is all that is. You are already a piece of that. But to know it consciously requires that you interact and engage with your reality, that you learn and you grow. It's part of the natural channel of, of what a human being is and does. So, how do you grow? Well, if you wait until your, your butt is kicked and you're pushed and drivel, feeling powerless sometimes, feeling threatened. Maybe even in a crisis situation that may even involve loss, disturbing, crazy. If you wait for your reality to kick ass you, that means you're in the kick ass school of growth. That means you wait until your ass is kicked. Then you grow, very unwillingly, of course. Now, your guides and your, your spiritual team and you have agreed in this lifetime that you're going to grow in more in the specific way a bit more than in another. Now, this growth... Uh, way, this uh, trigger for, for maximum growth, and could be also maximum crisis, could be money, it could be relationships, it could be health, it could even be, and um, some people also, in really owning your identity, owning who you are, really coming into your own as a as a unique person or a member of a repressed group. There are many different themes that you want to get into. Because if you want to get into money, you want to get into looking at value and worth and abundance and receiving. If you want to get into relationships, you want to look into love. You want to look into cooperation and support giving and receiving, working with other people. If you're into health, you know, well, so as, a, as your theme, then you're going to either work with other people's illnesses or your own. Your favorite one or the one that you 
fall back on more often than not. We call your commission of challenge. That's because you and your team have decided this theme is kind of what you're working on. So if you're working on money and you're resisting change, then you're going to have to have money crises. All right, so what is your commission of challenge? Everybody's got at least one. The ob object here is that as you grow on your spiritual path, your commission of challenge can return from being an issue with crises and stress back to a theme of curiosity, of interest, of working, of intrigue, of positive challenges. So, how do you grow? How do you grow in a way that's beautiful and elegant, where you don't have to resist and fight, you don't have to go kicking and screaming, you don't have to be pushed up against a wall, you don't have to engage your stress response, your distress response. You may have a eustress response, which is excitement. But how do you grow without reverting back into the kick-ass school of growth? Now, some people think that these crises are your lessons, that you have life lessons you've got to learn. And that is true if you're enrolled in the kick-ass school of growth. If you're not in the kick-ass school of growth, then you don't, it's really, you don't have lessons because you're not in a child or adolescent or, or a young adult uh, perspective. That's where you do all your education normally. You think of it that way, as being a student. No, you're not a student of, you're not a student in the sense that, that somebody is dictating lessons to you. No, you are a partner co-creating and learning and growing with a helpful team. So we want to suggest that maybe you might want to learn and grow in the more elegant, beautiful way. And that is by being an adult, not seeing it as something coming at you, not letting your ego get, you know, upset and taking it personally because the universe has nothing against you. In fact, it's all for you. But your ego would be in a, getting to a snit. So let go of the ego. Let go of your inner child, adolescent, and young adult attitudes that are filled with entitlement, powerlessness. No, step into the powerful, empowered, free, loving adult one who knows that they are working as a team. Go with that. And as you are an adult, then pursue that area which you have chosen as your commission of challenge, deliberately, consciously, and learn about it and grow about it willingly. Hold a resonance of the future that you want of the, of the frequencies you wish to hold in your day-to-day -day life. Work with your future self. Work with your spirit helpers. Work with your guides. It's a team work. It's a community. They'll get, give you support. They can help you experience magic. As an adolescent or, or, or a, a young person in school, you don't have that much magic. You want to be an adult. That's the magical place. That's the place of elegance and beauty and flow. All right. So this is what we suggest. Now, we've done seminars already on working with your team, your spiritual team. We've worked... Uh, we've already spoken about working with your future. These are things that you need to do. Expand your self-image. 
We also did a whole seminar on that. And why? Because those three seminars are pivotal to your spiritual path. If you already know how to do it, fine. If you would like a, to a little bit of a booster in those areas, then check out these seminars. But the point is, you can do it in a more elegant, empowered, magician's way. And as you do it that way, you own more of who you are, you expand more of your consciousness, you can love more yourself and value yourself as well as others, and your path can be so much easier. We wish that for you. We hope this has been helpful. We surround you with light and love. Farewell.